Welcome back, Rabbi Dr. Eliezer Brat. We are finishing Meseches Kiddushin, Seder Nashim. We are on the cusp of beginning a new Seder, Seder Nezikin, with a brand new Mesechta, Meseches Bavakama. For those who've studied in Yeshiva, this is one of the classic Yeshiva Mesechtas. For those who have not studied in Yeshiva, it's a Mesechta, which is fascinating. Every daf, from one daf to the next, is an exciting and invigorating learning. So, Rabbi Dr. Brutt is here with us once again to do as usual. Before we start a Masechta, he takes us through the history of some of the Mepharshim on the Masechta and usually focuses on one or two of the classic volumes that are written on the Masechta and usually he has a couple that people may not know about and focuses on the authors. We would like to thank our sponsor, Rabbi Dr. Michael Brady who is dedicating this episode in memory of his father, Rabbi Dr. Barry Chaim Dov Brady. May the learning and anything we learn from Rabbi Dr. Brutt about this Masechta be an Eloi for his neshama. So I'm here in America. Rabbi Dr. Brutt is in Eretz Yisrael and Ramat Beit Shemesh. We hope he is doing okay. And we continue to hope and pray that everybody should be safe around the world. And without any further introduction, Rabbi Dr. Eliezer Brutt, take it away. Okay, so we're learning, we're about to start, Dafim is about to begin Masechtas Baba Kama, which is in a new Seder, Seder Nazikin. So before one, Klali stick a idea for Seder Nazikin, and then um, one or two, some broader ideas for Masechtas Baba Kama, and then we'll get through the Mepharshim as follows. It's known that when you start learning Gemara with children, a lot of times they start learning it with either Masechus Baba Kama or Baba Matziah, some with Il Matziah, some with Parak Meru, some with Hakainus. So the question is, how far back and what's the reason behind it? So I heard many times, and now one could even see it, um, from my, my Rav, Rabbi Vishai David, in his book, which I spoke a little bit about, The Warmth and Radiance of G'dayli Yisrael, says that his Rebbe, Rav Salavechik, said that the reason why kids learn Eil Matzias or Parak Mruban, these type of things is because there's a famous Gemara, it's a Gemara in Baba Basra, Amr of Shmuel, Haraitza, Shiachim, Yasik, Bedine, Mamnus. She'ein l'cha m'ktsayi b'tayra yoyser mehen v'hein k'mayin hanoiveya. Basically, there's a unique strength which is, um, which is developed intellectual and intuitive skills in learning these inyanim, especially if you learn, let's say, the Nesivas, the Ksayis, the Avnulum, all these types of different things. Um, Bekitzer, so the reason is to open up the minds, and that's why we start already young kids, start le- letting them learn Nazikin um, um, first. Interestingly enough, um, Rav Moshe had a different thing. He said is, it's the reason is to sensit- sensitize a young child to respect and learn to be extremely careful regarding other people's property and person. And this is a very interesting um, reason of Rav Moshe. But both Rav Salavechik and Rav are explaining the minig, which is found by many, that they learn Gemara, they start in Azikim. This is obviously a, a conversation that needs to be had in much greater length. Just to mention Rav Henkin, who was one of the great Kedalim of the pa- in, in America before the war already, and after the war, a contemporary of Rav very close with Rav he held actually, and he writes this in a few different places and, and published in his Ksavim, Dafka to start not with um, Nazikin, he was aware of what was done in Europe. He says in Europe that was one thing. Now it's more important halacha dika things that are more lemaisa. In Europe, they didn't need it as much because they were able to rely on what the chinuch they got at home. Anyway, this is a conversation just throwing out the, that needs to be had much greater length. What actually was done throughout the ages, but I'm just throwing this out there, just these two ideas about it. Now, one other idea specifically focused on masechtas babakama, something we mentioned a little bit about. We had an episode discussing my cotton. Some people, when we were learning Masechtas Marikatan, so we had a whole sheer and a half devoted to, um, some people don't learn, they don't they want to learn Masechtas Marikatan, it's uh, things talking about death, Avelis, all these things, and so they would st- they stay away they stay away from learning this. So we tried to trace throughout the generations if people did learn it or didn't learn it, and we one of the places we saw um, was some cipher um, certain masechtas he would have chulin they would they would fast and uh, and there was other a bunch of other sources about it so interestingly enough I mentioned at the time and the more barichos one could find in, in a article from 
Rabbi Ram Shisha, who is a tremendous expert on the Chsam Seifer, where basically it sounds like the Chsam Seifer, when he gave Shir on Baba Kama, one year, one Zman, basically towards the beginning of the Zman, someone died, there was some death, and he stopped giving Shir after that Vav. And interestingly enough, they discovered a manuscript of materials of the Chsam Seifer with a whole a Shir of some sort, and even some Kabbalistic sentences before a notebook of his, and in there he talks about a tefillah that, he had, that Hashem Yisbarach should help him from meaning Ezekin, Umatzikin, all different things. So the Shisha over here explains this, um, and this is the Chsam Seifer, um, which I dealt with a little bit in that year. The Chsam Seifer Bechlau, in these type of what I call Hibijibi, Hecher and Yanim, not for us, Regal Hamoinam. So it got him nervous, and it seems he stopped giving Shir um, at the time. But um, And there's, other, there's a lot of interesting things about the Chsam Seifer for this, but, but in general, not, even with the Chsam Seifer, what we're going to see today is it was learned throughout the ages. It was a Masechta, even if one doesn't start right away. It's an extremely important Masechta, fundamental sources for much of Hilchas Nazikin. So number one, uh, Eitzah Taiva is, when you're learning this Masechta, is to know Parshish Mishpatim very well and learn the Rishayim in Parshish Mishpatim very well. Because this helps a lot, it's not only about just seeing the psukim. The, everything is based on the psukim in parshas. A, a lot, a large percentage is based on the psukim in mishpatim, and even a lot of times, a ramban chumish could help. Who knows what? It could help you while learning. This is one piece of information. And more recent years, there's a, I'm pointing this out. There's a chibur from a Rabbi Benun, and others a set called Mikrois. And on the valley mishpatim, they have a lot of information. Starting the spring, where it starts off with the Psukim and the Rishayim, but it goes to the Midrashi Halacha, which we'll start with right now, the Mishnayis. So I always mention there's something called Mish- Mishnah Saras Yisrael, the Safrai family here wasn't published as a book, it's only in digital form, called Mishnah Saras Yisrael. Many don't like it, but I just point out the different um, tools out there. One does not have to use these tools. In Masechus Baba Kama, Midrashi Halacha, we play a key role, which is Mechil to the Rabbi Shmuel, but also a more recent discovery, Mechil to the Rabbi Shem Focusing faster to getting to the Gemara. We have the Gemara. We always mention the, the Gear Sais in the Gemara. So this is the Diktuke Sai from Ababa Kama. And there was in the in the 1950s, there was some type of project with Rabbi Ezra Tzir Malamed, Yaakov Nochem Epstein, and others to publish some type of Gemara. They successfully published Baba Kama, Baba Matsya, Baba Basra, which focused a little bit on the Gear Sais and a Pshat oriented based on Rashi and Rabbi Nechanano, um, um, Pirish on the Masechta, useful tool. Um, but then, interestingly enough, with manuscripts, and this goes to the shiurim that I gave with Rukhaim Knievsky, from B'nai Brak, from the Haredi Publishing House, the Shapsi Frankel Rambam came out, the Frankel Mafteach on Baba Kama. So the Mafteach part we'll discuss soon, but in the back half of the volume is fascinating, is based on manuscripts. They got a hold of numerous different manuscripts of the Masechta, and they have all the different Shin and Chais, and they have Askamas from the Great Kedalim, whether it's Roshan Azamrabal, Yashiv, the Eid Haredis, Rav Ozner, and Rechaim Kanievsky. So here you see even the ultra Haredi world of Bnei Brak, a volume coming out of them with Shin and Chais. Okay, it's fascinating to see the Agdama and the, pro- and the project behind it. Going further on, Yushalmi, Yushalmi Baba Kama has a ton of material just to mention, way back, Yisro Levi, who was one of the fathers in, in Mechkerm of, of Talmud, but he was a Yid, a tired like a Yid, who it's supposedly said on him, he sat and learned with with, um, with Talis and Film the whole day. So even though he was an academic, but yes, he was, uh, um, Shlom Zalman Hevel has a whole article all about his greatness. He's accepted by everyone, kosher. Um, anyway, so he put out a Yushalmi with Purushim already. And later on, the introduction to this Yushalmi, which is very helpful to read, was published from, from German. It was translating to Hebrew and the Tuim. And then, a few years back, a Yushalmi, other manuscripts of Yushalmi and Ezekiel were published with a parish from Shal Liebman and Rebel Re- 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 Professor Rosenthal. Okay, now moving just one last idea over here is the Tesefta. So um, for me, the Tesefta of Masechus Baba Kama has a special thing because we have a parish from none other than the Magen Avram, a parish of his on on the Tesefta Baba Kama. And yes, there's the Chazi David, Tesefta Kapshuta, the Purushim. Okay. Those are just some of the basic tools out there. We'd just like to mention them very, very briefly. Uh, now, Mechtar, there's a book um, that's come out very recently in the past few months from you have Shalom Vestreich, Arba Ovis Nazikin, which has a lot of material in a more academic style about the first six Prakama Baba Kama. Now, just one more. This is a kosher piece of material, Mechtar, but from a great Litvisha Gadol. Um, 
and that is from the Sri Deish. The Sri Deish, one of the early sugyas, complicated sugyas in Baba Kama, is the sugya of Metav. Extremely lamdish, a complex sugya. Some yeshivas actually skip it because it's so complex. So the Sri Deish basically published a 200, come out 200 page safer in the late 1930s called Mechkarim the Talmud. He deals with, it's fascinating what he does in all different things in the safer. It was later on published in the Sri Deish Chelek Dal from Meiser of Cook. And more recently, Mechon Yushalayim published a fancy volume of all the Sri Deish's materials called Parshanut. And they are also, they publish this thing. So if one wants to have some very interesting material in the beginning of Baba Kama, 200 pages, and get a very interesting insight in Mahalach in uh, Baba Kama using the standard Yeshiva Shalimud, but also many other of the sources I just mentioned, Bavli, Yushalmi, Mechiltas, Targumim, and whatever you want. Okay, now we go back to our normal, um, regular stuff, which is as follows. We always talk about the Gainim, so Baba Kama still has the Itza Gainim, which we spoke a lot about in different episodes, but it's supposedly going to be updated um, by Professor Brody in, in the near future. And also over here, the Chashivas of the Gainim, and especially the Eitzah Gainim volume of Makama, Reb Shlem Yosef Zevin has an article about it in, in, his, in his Seifen Visvar. Okay, now we start going to the earlier Rishayim, Rabbi Nechanan, so you open up Yeshas Vilna, we already spoke about the Chashivas of the Rabbi Nechanan discoveries, it was one of the things that was published in Shas Vilna, but it's only up to around Daflam at Zion, I think, something like that. So this Bam Levine, who I just quoted in the Itzah Gainim, he discovered more materials of Rabbi Nechanan since those years, this is in the 1940s, until today, constantly new discoveries of much more material of Rabbi Nechanan has been published. As recent Mechon um, Vakshal from or Maznayim, known they they have a beautiful edition published by a very good friend of mine, Yosef Yosef Dubovic, a Hasidic fellow from Bnei Brak, published a beautiful edition with tons of footnotes, with tons of new materials of Rabbi Nachman incorporating everything up till now and new pieces that he discovered. Even after he published the volume by Vakshal. He found even more material, which could be found in Chitzke Bayram. So we have tons of material, Rabbi Nechanano, very enlightening information when one learns Baba Kam. Okay, now we have Rashi. So we always discuss Rashi, then he tumbles about Rashi. So there has been a little work about Rashi on specifically focusing on all the different manuscripts on Parakeets of the a master's of some sort in, in Hebrew University. Um, but back to the Frankel Gemara. They had a few different manuscripts of Rashi, and they mention in their in the back a few hundred pages, um, in the back section, various nuschais relating to the um, various manuscripts of Rashi. Also, my friend from Lakewood, Maisha Maiman, has a few um, has a nice article that was published in Yeshurin, which a PDF. If you request for the PDF, I could send it to you, no problem. Uh, where he deals with Rashi Bichlal as a parshan, and he and he specifically deals with issues that come up in Rashi and Baba Kama. Okay, so this is the. The first star of Rishayim. We go further on. There's a reason we didn't that he has published on other that we have materials of his published on other sectors. It was Zechariah Agmati. It was written around 1190. It's coined the term when describing this is it's an early sheet in Mikubetzes because he's his, he's a sheet in Mikubetzes of materials from Ga'inim, including Rabbi Nechananel, including Rambam, and so Lamashal and Baba Kama. It's been published a few times. I think even as late as 2010. Okay. Fine. So this is the early Rishayim. Now, um, are there a, a little later? We have the Rajba, and the Rajba basically will be will be considered the main Rishon that the, in the Yeshiva world that that's Ariyim used from when it was published all the way in the beginning. And it seems they people had access to this throughout the generations for the most part. But is there any other materials of Rishayim? So. First, there's a Chudushi Talmud Harajba that's been published on various Masechtas, including Baba Kama, a whole Chibur. This has been published only in recent years. Now, what's a Mapecha as far as Rishonim? So we'll just mention very briefly a few of them. Number one is the Raivid. The Raivid, we know the Raivid. We know the Raivid as one of the superstar Rishonim, as they call it. Um, uh, Professor Chaim Salvechik in his various writings has tons of articles devoted to, and his, his brother is Isidore Tursky, Rabbi Tursky, um, the Talmud Rebbe has lots of material about the, the Ravid and the, the Chashivas of the Ravid. But the point is, a lot of times, the, but the Ravid write on Shas. It turns out the Ravid did, but a lot of it did not survive. But Baba Kama, in the late 30s, discovery was made by a Yid. I'm going to call him Atlas, Shoal Atlas, Shmuel Atlas, sorry. And um, actually, I forgot if it's Shmuel or Shoal, so we'll just call him Atlas. And you'll see why in a minute that I'm going to call him Atlas just to be Yitzhiz, I know a certain thing in a, in a minute. Basically is, this person was a Litvisha person, learned by Rabitzel Panavizer, 
was a very close friend of the Sri Deish. And in the 1940s, in the early late 30s, he's working on this Raiva from manuscript, and he publishes the work with tons of Aris, and he has a beautiful askama from his good friend, the Sri Deish, who we just mentioned earlier. And um, tons of Aris, etc., etc. Now, the problem is that this person eventually joins, um, he comes to America, and he becomes a professor in the reform movement. Um, I believe he was not Shemr Shavis um, at some point. So the question always is, is one able to use such a chibur? On one hand, it was published, it sounds like when he published it, um, um, I don't know exactly, but it sounds like he was a more firmer, so to speak, or at least the three days gave him Askama. So some people say, no, you can't use it. I was told that in Lakewood, there is a copy of the Raivin, and someone went ahead, a Kanoi, and crossed out in black ink all the Ha'aris, and there's tons of Ha'aris on the page, of the Sefer throughout all Sefer. And today, there's even a from version where they just print the top and they remove all the Ha'aris. But the thing is like this, the Sri Deish wrote tons of Ha'aris on the Sefer. Turns out, the Sri Deish was Mamish close friends with him, he knew him personally, and he kept up with him even when he was a Reformed Jew. And they have beautiful letters, it could be they weren't supposed to be published, but Marx of Shapiro published them. I still remember late one night when I discovered them um, in a Torah Mada journal in Shul. I couldn't put it down. I sat there mesmerized from reading these letters. And afterwards, it caused the whole debate if they should have been published, they shouldn't have been published. But anyway, point is, what about using this, this person's safer? So interestingly enough, Ramanasha Klein in his Mishnah Halachas says not to use it. This gets into a very complex question, which is a topic I hope to devote at least one whole shir, maybe more, about using sources from problematic people. What's the attitude throughout the ages? Do we say, and what's the parameters of such a thing? But anyway, over here specifically, um, this Ravid, which on Hebrew books one could see with the Horus and this Horus of Sri Deish and others, okay. So that's an interesting deal. But the Sri Deish has an, one other point with this is as follows. The Sri Deish says, he has a whole article where he says um, that there's importance of using new manuscripts of Rishayinam. Because why? So the answer is like this. The Ravid, there are pieces of the Ravid on Baba Kama and Yoshita and Gobetzes, which we're going to talk about shortly. So what do you, what's the big deal? He found the manuscript of the Ravid. So he shows, and he gives a, a whole example and a whole complex sugya, that if one just relied on the pieces in the Shita and Gobetzes, you wouldn't understand what the Ravid's talking about. And he shows that he one was learning the sugya, he was giving a share about it, and he's trying to figure out the Ravid, and he figures out it must be something's going on, the Shita was not did not quote it properly and everything. And Baruch Hashem, he says, he is mechaven to every word of the Ravid when the manuscript came out and his good friend Atlas sends it to him. He checks this, one of the first things he checks up and he sees his taka, his taira, was Oiska Halton and it worked out and that's what it said in the real manuscript. So this is a known thing that even though there's a chashivas, Masechtas Baba Kama, we're going to just throw it out there right now, has the Sheet and Kubetzis, which is an incredible work of pieces of Rishayinim. It's, it's published in 1762 and that's how a lot of Masechtas people knew Rishayinim has only had a Sheet and Kubetzis. And Berutal Ashkenazi's way before, he's a Rebbe slash Chavrus of the Arizal, um, putting him into the late 1500s. But the point is, there's a benefit if one could get the whole region. Okay. Lamaisa, um, just to mention very fast, some the Me'iri, it's 1950, is the first time it comes out. Balamar and the Mulchamis, but that's it. We don't have real Ramban, except we must mention the Kuntras Dina de Garmi, because this, most of these sugis relate to the end of Baba Kama. This is also only published in 1523 and not till 1928 again in the project of the Ramban with Rabbi Zal Meltzer, which we dealt with much more at length in Rukhan Kanievsky episodes. Now, there seems to be another country of the Din de Garmi of Rabbeinu Ephraim. This can be found in a recent from Kaivitz called Eil Yishayo. Okay. Another major discovery, 1969, Professor Shaman Freeman publishes Rabbeinu Yonison Milonil's parish on Masechtas Baba Kama, another important reason. What about the Balea Taisis? Baruch Hashem, we have Taisis Rosh and Taisis Rabbeinu Peretz. And then Bloy, what's called the Bloy um, Rishayinim in the Yeshiva world. I never really devoted a full um, arichos about it, just to mention over here in Baba Kama Lamashal. He has a volume called Chitza Kamainim, and in there is, it's called Taisis Aruchais Rabbeinu Tam Verabelezer. It's an extremely important work. Tons of material from Talmud Rabbeinu Tam. It's available on Hebrew books. You don't have to go buy it. So yeah, it's excellent material, enlightening one for Limud of the um, Balea Taisis. Okay, moving on to the Achrayim, we already spoke about Rabbi Tzal Ashkenazi, so interestingly enough, there's another Chiba, which is called the Shita of Masechtas Baba Kama, from a contemporary of the Shita and His name is Rabbi Yaakov Kasturo, author of, if you look on the side of Yimachon Yerushalayim Shalchan Aruch, you'll see Erech Lechem. Turns out, he also wrote a work on Be'ah, but uh, he wrote a massive 
work on Baba Kama that only came out in the years 2008 by Ahavat Shalom. This is a, a, a contemporary of Rabbi Tzal Ashkenazi, a Talmud of the Rabbaz and the Ralbach. It, this, the Sefer is very, very intense Iyun, what's known as the Kampanton Iyun from Rabitza Kampanton, based Medrash. And he has lots of materials. It seems he used the same library, according to Spiegel, in an article he wrote about it as a Shidin Kometzis. Anyway, a very important work, published by Avot Shalom only a few years back. Okay, one other early Achron is Yamsha Shleima. Yamsha Shleima from the Marshal. We've spoken also a little bit about him in previous episodes, but his work on Baba Kama is, is published um, something like 30 years after he dies. And Lamaisa, one learned Shach, we'll see how often it's quoted. And even the Magan Avram quotes it, it's Baba Kama, and Magan Avram is on Archaim. He manages to quote it over 23 times. Tremendous impact it had on these two great Gedoyle Yapaiskim. Okay, that's the first generation of Achreinim. What about the next generation? So, Bar Hashem, we know we have our Marsha, who um, it's published in 1611, the Maram, that's published in the 1619, 1621. Then we get to uh, one of my favorite all time Achreinim, also Ben Dayer of the Marsha. And Maram, which is the Tyrus Chaim, Rabbi Avram Chaim Shur, 1624. He also is similar to Marsha, which we have the Agadus and the Chidushe um, Agadus and the Chidushe Halacha. Same thing over there, it's on nine Masechtas. Lamashal, the Chida, when he's talking about him, Shem Agadon, the Svara Yeshara Viktas Dina. Um, when he's t- referring to the Tars Chaim, I hope eventually to give a whole shear, at least one shear, all about the Tars Chaim, the significance of the Sefer. It's on nine Masechtas and Shas. Okay. Interestingly enough, a, a younger contemporary is the Bach. So we, a recent discovery located Chidushe HaBach on about nine Masechtas that's been published by Oiz Vahadar in a few years back. So, so basically we're doing fine, but these, some of these things are new discoveries. Okay, then there's a Chibur, which pretty much is unknown, called Beis Yehuda. He was the Avbezdin in Kalish in the times of the Magan Avram. It seems to be one of the, one of the main Rabbanim in that p- period of time in Kalish. And he dies in 1698. In 1687, a few years after the Magan Avram dies, he publishes the Sefer Beis Yehuda. Why don't we hear about the Sefer? It has extremely chash of Askama from Yitzhak Mipozna. And um, he's done a lot in the Marsha, and he has also Chedusha Halachas and Agadus. So Yitzhak Yishai Weiss has a theory. He brings down this old Messiah that he was sort of mezalzel in the Magan Avram. When the Magan Avram asked him for Askama, he gave Askama, but he's like, why are you asking Halacha? Why not in Lamdus, like in, in learning, be even like my Sefer? Um, no one's going to ever hear of your Sefer, and Taka, no one ended up hearing of his Sefer, where the Magan Avram became the Paisik. I don't know so much um, if this story is true, because if you look at the Askama that we do have, it seems to be a pretty nice Askama. Um, and a lot of times, Farm don't make it for different reasons. I don't know that that was the reason. And it also says in the article that he's a Talmud of Marsha. He's definitely not a Talmud of Marsha, because he's born, he's like a few years old when the Marsha dies. Okay. Anyway, another sefer, interestingly enough, at this period of time, little little um, is the Rebbe Reb Heschel. And I call him the Rebbe Reb Heschel because that's how we always know of him. But he's definitely not a Rebbe. He's definitely predates Hasidim. Anyway, so in the sefer Toldus Aaron, published in 1692 from a Talmud of his, there's tons of material on the first few parakim of Baba Kama. Interestingly enough. He brings a lot of the Marsha. What's the significance? In an episode, one of the earliest episodes we spoke about Rechaim Knieski, and we spoke a little bit about the Marsha, because one of the Sfarim Rechaim Knieski wrote as, as a youngster was about the Yeshli Yashivs of the Marsha. So I quoted a story that the Chida brings down, a Masaira, the Rebbe of Heschel is sort of Mazalzal in, in the in the Marsha. But here I found that he, he definitely deals with the Marsha and the Maram a few times in the Sfar. Okay. Next, another Chash of Achron, the Panam who dies in 1774, publishes a Chibur in 1729 on the Masechta, also available on Hebrew books. The Great Goyen, one of the classic Yeshiva Shachreinim on the Masechta, the Pnei Yeshua, is published in 1756, the same year he dies. Recent years, there's a work called Chidushi Alachas from the Maram Ramayshe Kharif, who was active in 1767, but it's only published in 2019. Okay, Yama Talmud. This is a work from Ramayshe Arnstein, the brother of the Yeshua Yaakov. It's published in 1827, after he di- a few years after he dies. But who publishes it? This is one of the earliest works published by the Shail Meshiv and his brother, his re- um, the bro- the his great Chavrusa, Ramartre Ettinger, which we devoted episode way back in the Machine Matzah controversy, where they ended up finding themselves on the opposite sides. But beforehand, they wrote a bunch of Svarim together, such as the Magen Gibayrim. And this was also one, one of the earliest works that they wrote about. They published their, it's their uncle, and they published his work from manuscript with Ha'aris Rulam Sechta. And the back has numerous correspondences that they had with the great Gedolim of the generation, such as Ramart Chabanet, Chsam Sefer, Bekiveger. This Sefer was published until 1960 over six times. So it's a very popular Sefer. Okay. 
Fast forward to the yeshiva, um, to one of the most famous farm in the yeshiva world is the Nachas David. I had a conversation a few times with people if it's still as popular today as it was way back. I don't know. I, for some reason, think that it isn't, but I was told that I'm wrong. But the Nachos David, the Talmud Muvak of Rebchaim Velazhner, a person I hope to devote a whole episode to him. Anyway, when I was young, my father always used to tell me that when he learned Pesachlis Baba Kama, he felt he, he, didn't, he was learning at a time that he didn't have a Magad He had a Magad Shir, the Prakim that he had, the Nachos David and Baba Kama Matziah. It was, that was equal to having a great share. It's published in 1864. A whole article about him has been published in Yeshurun volume 33. Um, he has incredible drushes, two volumes that have been published by Moisir of Cook, and a lot of information, not a lot, but some nice information could be learned about the Nachos Dov and the Chibir uh, Minchas Yehuda. Going further, um, one other achron of this Kufa, a little earlier than the Nachos Dov, is the Mili the Nazikim from Rav Shlaim Kluger, but this is only published in, the, in our generation, in 1999. Okay. Now, Lamaisa, what is the svarim, the, the lamdish svarim in the world of halacha? So this is already from the Sma, the Taz, and Shach, going further to the Urim Tumim, and then comes along the Ksais, and the Sivis, Divrei Mishpat, Shara Mishpat, these were the Achreinim, that even though they're written, the starting point of them is halachadik, definitely not the halachadik aspect, but this is where the intense eon happens, and these became the classics in the yeshiva world, Ad Hayoyim, these are the Yeshiva Bibles, and a proper episode needs to be to explain the significance of all these farm and, and the stories behind them. Okay, fast forward, 1879, just to mention just some type of unique safer over here, Reb Hillel Gleibstein publishes a safer called Chais and Yeshuais. Um, it's Alpi Kabbalah, Baba Kama Alpi Kabbalah. He comes to Eretz Yisrael already in 1869. He's a Kotzker Chassid, but a very interesting type of person. He was anti the Red Zinus Tchelis, wrote against him, all different types of things, a lot to talk about him. But um, he learned Stad Deres, he had all different types of interesting shitas and a bunch of different interesting svarim, just I felt to mention it because of the uniqueness about this aspect of Kabbalah. Okay, next is... Um, Levosh Mordechai, from Ramayisha Mordechai Epstein, Rosh Hashiva, Slabatka, Hevron. So, on the historical aspects, one could find in the recent book on Hevron slash Slabatka from Tukashinsky about him, but Ramayisha Mordechai Epstein, great guy that he was. So, first, he was the Rebbe of the Sri Deish, and the Sri Deish, an incredible hesped that he gave on him, published in Lefrakim. He talks about his tremendous eon that he had and the... the it was unique. It was it, it was originality in his kaiyach chiddush that he had, and he talks about this in his brief hesped that he gave. He wasn't feeling well, so he couldn't give a whole thing. He said, "Mir Hashem, when this farm of his become published, more people will be able to learn from him." Reb Zevin has a beautiful write up about his method in Ishim Vashitas, and one looks in Hagdama, fascinating Hagdama in Masechtas Babakama. You see about the chashivas of learning with svara. He emphasizes this in his Hagdama, Ramayisha Mar Epstein, and he also talks about learning ksais, which I mentioned is one of the most important things, but then he asks Mechila, so to speak, on the times that he argues with the Ksais and the Sivas in the Sefer, cause, or even when he was learning giving Shir, because it was not Chas Shalom to be anything against them. Okay, this is just a Stam interesting idea. Another interesting Chibar that came out in recent years, which made a Mapecha in the Yeshiva world, it, it caused, not Mapecha, sorry, the wrong word, caused a sort of like hack, was Reb Chaim, uh, they found the notebooks of Chaim and Baba Kama. So first it came out from one person of a, a Jakavi Yadiyah, as they say, there's the Chedushim of Rebuven Ugashevitz. Who's Rebuven Ugashevitz? So this is, um, this tremendous Yid died without children in about 1950. He was born in the same city and he knew Rebbein Cutler well, it seems. And he was it seemed to be some type of genius. Eventually he becomes a Rashiv in Antwerp for a few years by Rav Amiel. And eventually he ends up in America and he sat and learned. And the way he would support himself was he tutored people. He never got married for some reason. and But his brother had kids. And, what he, so he, he, and basically he would sit in the 42nd Street Library in Manhattan and he learned philosophy. And he wrote three books in philosophy in Yiddish. The question obviously is who in those years was reading philosophy, especially in Yiddish. But it seems that these books in Yiddish were, it was funded in recent years to be translated by a great philosopher, a mathematician in America, in Eretz Yisrael, Professor Steiner, who died recently. And he did a phenomenal job translating these three books. Pub, who paid for it? A Talmud of, of this Ogeshevitz. I mentioned that he was funded but um, he used to raise money by tutoring children. So one of the children ended up paying for it. was a wealthy person. They paid for the funding, the translation of this material. And it seems, that according to philosophers today, 
it's amazing even for a person who never went to school, never went, he ne wasn't academic, so to speak, in philosophy. He just sat and learned in the 42nd Street Library. But this was not his main thing. He was a Yid. As I said, he was a Shashiva in Antwerp for a few years. And he ends up, pub he wrote a lot on Shas. His Hebrew on Baba Kama was published over 200 pages after he dies. And has Askamas, you'll see side by side. Today, it doesn't mean as much, but maybe some people would say it does mean a lot. Rab Aaron Cutler and Rab Salvechik, side by side, Askama. And they both knew him well, and they say the, and they praise him very well. As I said, Rabbi Aaron Cutler, he learned by um, Rabbi Aaron Cutler comes from the same hometown as this person. So I'm just mentioning another idea of an interesting type of safer. It's available on Hebrew books, the Chidushim of Rabbi Ruven Okay, and just to conclude with, like everything, every Masechta has tons and tons of recent material. If you search on Aitzah Chachma Hebrew books, all these things, hundreds of svarim have been published. Just to mention, Aitzah Mafarshi Talmud, a kaivitz called Eli Shayo, which has tons of Rosh Yeshiva material, and also a volume called Tyrus or Rosh Yeshiva. So these are just a small amount of the materials of Abba Kama, this Masechta that is an incredible Geshmaka Masechta that Tafiyemi is about to begin. And these are some of the materials available out there to use and learn while you're learning it. Okay, fascinating, especially about this last year. He said there are scummers from both of those Kedalim on these philosophy books? No, 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 no. Iron is not, I don't think Rav Aaron is going to give a scummer on these Yiddish On his Chedushim, on Baba Kama, he writes a very nice Haskama. He says he knew him and everything. And side by side, it's, it says one has come from Rav Ruve, sorry, it's from Rav Aaron and, uh, and uh, Rav Yashir Bar Salvech. Amazing. Excellent. Okay. We appreciate that. Let's be in touch for some other fascinating episodes coming up in the near future. Thank you. Bessie.